there we go. We're live. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Fearless Fridays with Lisa. My special guest today is actually my cousin. <laughs> yes, my cousin. Hey, Tony Bancroft, say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here with Cousin Lisa. Thanks I know. It's me. so cool. So this is my cousin, and he's also an incredibly successful animator and entrepreneur in the world of movie making, movie directing, movie animation, working with Disney, working with many other production companies. So you're going to hear his story, and we have to share this too. He has a twin brother, my other cousin, Tom Bancroft. So this is Tony Bancroft. And we're going to have Tom on, uh, hopefully simultaneously to Tony, your, your share today on Fearless Fridays. But just first and foremost, hello, cuz. Welcome to the Fearless Friday show. <laughs> hey, guys. It's good to be here. I, I just love that you're doing this, Lisa. I'm so happy to be part of it. So cool. And we both love your mom. She's my aunt and she's your mom, Aunt Babe. Yeah. Hello, Aunt, aunt Babe. babe. <laughs> I just call her mom, you know. Yeah, just mom. mom. <laughs> so, Tony, what I always do with the guests is I ask them, first and foremost, to share their progression of success. And it's okay to go big because then we're going to have you share about the fear that you had to overcome as that fear got you know, escalated or even more, more, yeah. or as that success got escalated. So let's just start with, I think the most, one of the first profound, rich blessing from God himself over you was your story on how you got hired at Disney, you and Tom. So let's just start there with that success right. story and then we all will evolve. Right. No problem. I'd love to uh, share that. Actually, yeah, Tom and I both being twins, we grew up always loving to draw. It was just something, you know, God had given this, uh, this talent, but also it was a passion. We had this drive to create characters. I grew up loving Charles Schultz and Peanuts and Calvin and Hobbes, comic strips mostly, and comic books. Very nerdy, you know, this was the, the late 80s, early 90s when nerdy wasn't so cool. So we were, we were definitely there in the geek zone. But we loved it. it was, we were doing what we loved and what we were passionate about. Well, that led us to find out about one of the, actually the best school in the world for animation, California Institute of the Arts. It's a college, a university. We went there and uh, got into it. We um, worked our butts off, Tom and I both. So we, we'd always have kind of a, we have a very similar story and, and your listeners are gonna hear that, I think, when they hear Tom. But we both got into an internship through Disney and it was like a nine week, very intensive uh, internship. And um, we had to try out for it. And we were the only ones in our class that was allowed to show our portfolio. Cause we were, we were actually underclassmen. We were like uh, sophomore. And, um, and we were begging Disney, please let us show our portfolio. Cause we had no money left to go into our next year of school. Wow. We'd run out of all of our money. And so if we didn't get into this internship, it was like all or nothing. Because if we didn't get into that internship, we literally would have had to, I don't know, work at Carl's Jr. again or McDonald's again <laughs> yeah. and try and earn enough money to maybe start all over again in animation. But we were so driven and passionate about it that we worked hard, put our portfolio together and got into the internship. It was a big day. That was a huge moment for me in my life. The, ver the first one, because then that led to working at Disney for the next 12 years. And Tom and I were there at the absolute best time at Disney. This was the 90s. So this is what they call now the second golden age of Disney animation. At the time, we didn't know it though, but we were making working on films like Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and The Lion King and Emperor's New Groove and Mulan, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, you know, Rescuers Down Under. These were the films that we started on and that we, we grew in uh, as ju first junior animators and then ultimately rose to um, senior animators there at Disney. Wow. And then I was, um, so I, I animated a lot of comedy characters because I always loved doing comedy stuff. Um, so I kind of, and an animator, just so you guys know, we get typecast just like a, an actor does, really. It's very similar. We get a script, there's a storyboard, there's a character already in the case of Beauty and the Beast. There's these object characters that are kind of the funny sidekicks of Beast and, and Belle. And I got put onto uh, Cogsworth, which was the clock. And I loved it. And I, I grew in that performance. I became an animator on that film. And that led me to doing the next comedy character on Aladdin. I did Yago the parrot, you know? crackers and all that and that led to um 
uh what was after the uh aladdin gee whiz um lion king i guess yeah and i thought at the time that maybe since i had just done a parrot a bird maybe i can get zazu and i thought you know i'm trying to move up now to a supervising animator maybe they'll give me zazu and i got pumba the warthog hakuna matata and i was i was through the roof because they were already pumba and simone were always already like the star breakout characters of the Lion King, even in the earliest stage of storyboards and stuff. So I knew it was going to be great. And I worked my, my butt off to make sure that I rose to that occasion because it really was, there was a lot of pressure on me to make sure that I, I um, got the performance right, that I, that I kept the funny, you know, they, we talk about that in animation. If the storyboards are funny already, the voice is funny in your animation, you got to keep the funny. You can't, keep you know, funny. you can't go backwards. You got to, it's got to be at least as good as it came to you. So um, that was, that worked out great. I got a lot of publicity and um, fanfare from the company for Lion King. Cause it, it, it even in the first weekend, it went over a hundred million dollars. It was the first Disney film to do that. Um, so it was a real honor to be a part of that. And now of course it's this huge, you know, legacy that has gone on and on to Broadway and other things. Um, but after Lion King, yeah, I got um, the opportunity. I was on uh, Rescue or Hunchback of Notre Dame for a little bit, doing some of the gargoyles, those comedy characters. And then I got tapped by Disney to co-direct Disney's Mulan, the animated movie about a Chinese girl who goes off to war in her father's place. Love um, it. That My was personal favorite. And you're the director. Is it? Yeah, my personal I, favorite well, yeah come on you. it, it she gets well. to show her 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 power and her and and disobey her family yet still it all turned out okay where the emperor rewards her her kingdom yep. rewards her her father rewards her and she gets the guy come on <laughs> nothing <laughs> better than that <laughs> it was great i mean i you know when i came on to it it was i, I was i was part of a a I didn't know it at the time, but I was definitely part of a, a new movement of a stronger female her heroine that we hadn't seen at Disney. Before that, it was Belle and Beauty and the you know and and uh, Ariel and stuff, and they always wanted uh, a man to help them. Right? I'm just looking for this man, and you know, and they needed a prince because they were these you know princesses in jeopardy. Um, but Mulan's not that. That's not her story. She's she's a girl that's very strong. She knows what she wants. Um, which is really just to be herself in a society at that time period in China that said, you know, a woman is something else. A woman is less than, um, and she just wanted to be who she was. And uh, through fighting, through going off and dressing as a man, she proves herself in a way, in a very unique way, in a world that wouldn't allow that normally. And instead of dying um, and being killed by the emperor, she's rewarded um, by him. So yeah. To me, that was a great experience because I was, I was starting to have children at that time, and I now have three daughters, but at the time I had two daughters, uh, one of them born during the making of Mulan, and for me to be able to bring to them, you know, a great female role model meant a lot to me, but now when you look at how it's reached the world and what it's become, you know, it's hard to explain how, how awesome that is. Beautiful, beautiful. And since then, you know, I've done I've, I've been in the animation industry 30 years. So I left Disney in 2000 because I, I wanted to achieve more. I've always had a dream of having my own animation company. So I went away. I left Disney, left Disney early, got out of a contract that was another, had another two years on it. People thought I was crazy. Um, and I did a very scary thing. And I went out and started my own animation company. And it did not succeed at first. You know, it was not the huge success. The industry had changed. The the marketplace 9-11 happened. It was during the big, you know, uh, problem with housing. The housing market broke and it was just a really difficult time to find financing for an independent animation company. So we folded that after seven years of doing that. And I've been independent ever since and had a new, really kind of a third act now, if you will, um, where I'm enjoying a lot of um, publicity and and, and opportunities, but on the independent side, I have a movie that's coming out this year called Animal Crackers. It's a CG animated film that has great cast of characters, great stars in it, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt and Sir Ian McKellen, you know, Gandalf is in it. I mean, it's, it's just cool. a great movie and it was a great opportunity. And like I said, 
a new third act. It's actually opening. I just got back from China and it's opening there July 27th. So yeah. Uh, it's a lot of success. <laughs> that kind of gets so you up to date. I know you want to talk about more. I want to hear mainly about your podcast with, with Tom, the Bancroft brothers, but oh, yeah. and where you're going to be speaking. I know you go speak to about your, um, that you're actually a professor now and you're teaching yeah. at the call at the university. But before you go into more success, we got to stop and talk about how the heck did you have the courage to leave Disney, especially end a contract early and go out on your own. Come on. There had to be tremendous fear there. Yeah. So share a little uh, bit about, know, I mean, I, if you I want was, to start there with the fear, that'd be great. And then what was your formula to get that fear to subside? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first real bout uh, with fear, I would say, is when I got the opportunity to direct Mulan. I was, at the time, 27. I was the youngest director in Disney history at that wow. point when they asked me to co-direct Disney's Mulan. Um, and there was that feeling and sense of, like, can I do this? Is this, I don't think I have enough experience. I doubted myself, let alone what did other people think. I was going into a situation where the people, the guys I worked with that I was underneath five years before, I was now their boss. In five years, I had risen from being a junior animator, starty, trainee kind of person at Disney to now being the director, which is the highest position in, at Disney. It was a lot. It was overwhelming and I felt stress. And I just, my mom had always raised us, our family, my, my brother and my sister with the, the notion of you know, you can, you can only say you need to, you should always say yes, because there's so many no's in this world mm -hmm. to invite yourself to be, to say yes is mm -hmm. to open a door. Mm -hmm. And if a door of opportunity opens, go through it. What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. Failure, but regret is worse than failure. And wow. I never wanted to be on my deathbed. And I'm sure you feel this way too, Lisa. I've heard you talk about it. I never wanted to be on my deathbed and, and be that person that's going, Oh, if only I would have, if I should, I should have taken that opportunity. So directing Mulan was that first one. And then deciding to leave Disney, I'd already been ramped up for taking chances for um, doors opening and me going through it, scary doors sometimes. Um, I'd already been, you know, felt that experience from doing the Mulan thing. Now, this was something that I was creating myself. I was creating a new studio. I had partners. We had a a lavish lifestyle. A lot of, we, had, we were doing really well with Disney and making a lot of money and all that kind of stuff. And I was making a choice now that would take myself, my wife, my family, these new kids, very young, all of them were under five at the time, and taking them into a place that I didn't know. Wow. There was no safety net. There was no, nothing there. There was no, it was purely a leap of faith. Um, thankfully, as a Christian, I really believe that God was in this choice. I really felt I'd spent a lot of time meditating and praying about what that next step would look like. And, and, and I felt like I had the support that God was telling me very clearly to go this route, to quit Disney and to leave and do that. So I did. And, um, and it was scary. Um, and it was everything that I thought, but it was also the best possible thing in my life to grow me as a person. I learned so much. I, I really felt like it was the only way that I could totally be in God's hands to really put myself in, in a place of, I and mean, we were at a point, Lisa, and I don't think I've ever told you this, but we were at a point where <clears throat> we were, we had mold in our house that hit, that hit and we had to move out of our house that I was paying the mortgage on. I was making no money at the time, being the mm. boss, the owner of the company. I was paying everybody else mm. and not paying myself. And so we were down to like no money. We're living in an apartment and I had to pay because I'm fighting the insurance company to pay for our, our mold problem in our house. And we're living in this apartment. And at one point we're paying the mortgage and the rent and trying to get them to reimburse us. Wow. And we had no money. We, we, were, we were going through our savings like crazy. Just, it was just like a waterfall gushing out. So um, at one point we were in the apartment and, we got ants 
bad case of ants in this apartment. It was built on an ant, ant mound or something like that. And my, my wife hates ants more than anything else in the whole world. And there's ants all over her kitchen. And she calls me at work and, and is crying, literally crying, going, oh, you have to do something. Come home. There's ants all over and they're crawling up my legs. I just I, go get some raid on the way home. So she tells me to get some raid spray. And I'm down on my like last five bucks that's supposed to get me through the week of lunches. You know, I'm like, you know, and I'm, I'm like, oh God, I got to go to the store. I go to the store at Vaughn's and I remember walking in with my five bucks and I'm upset. I'm cranky and I'm, uh, I just, I cannot believe like, God, what next? How can it get any worse than this? And I grab the raid and I go up to the cashier and she starts to swipe it and says, you know, if you would have got the one right next to it, there's a discount on it. And if you're a Vons Club member and this and this and this, and long story short, that can of Raid cost me 25 cents. 25 cents for a box. I mean, have you ever paid 25 cents for anything? And I left and I burst into tears as I'm driving home, thanking God for this can of Raid to kill the ants in our apartment. And it was then that I felt a reassurance to all my fears and anxieties that, you know, no matter what happened, we were going to make it, that God was going to be there for us. And if we just took these steps and if we just kept moving forward in faith, determination, and passion, yeah. that we were going to be okay. Wow. And we were. Wow. Wow. That's so inspiring. I know that you've made a difference with that story with our listeners. There's people that are going through that right now. And so I hear, I hear you saying faith perseverance and, and just believing you're going to be okay. Yeah. Passion. Yeah. And, and it, and it, and you do have to believe in yourself, you know, and you have to have the support of others. I, I credit my wife, um, my family really for being the ones that got me through that. Cause it was times that I was so down and I would go home and I'm like, why am I doing this? This is, I'm, I'm not treating you well. I'm not, you know, I'm not providing. Mm. What can I do? I can't do anything more. I've done everything I can to try and get work in, to try and raise funds for our projects. And mm -hmm. I got all this money going out. You know, my, my, that's when my wife would be there and she would just say, you know, you're doing this for a reason. And don't forget that reason. Wow. Keep your eye on the goal and we're going to make it, you mm. know, and I couldn't have done it. I couldn't, I would have given up. Yeah. I just would have given up, I think. But it was, it was, she got me through. Mm, I, yeah. I know that about her. And, you know, I do want to share with our listeners, you have a very special lineage, you and Renee, to, yeah. uh, to, Tom and Jennifer, Cami and Cliff. So those are your three. This is a family of Corey Bancroft's yeah. family. Nice. All of you yes. have long-term yeah. marriages. Like you guys are old, like long-term marriages. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just I'm to let you know, right Tony. Now. Only a Newsflash. cousin could say that. <laughs> but you got to share with our listeners, like, how do you guys do that? How, what was it that a single mom now named Corey Bancroft just fed truth over you guys? Oh, I don't know, yeah. like raised you that way that, or did you just choose the right wife? I, you know, like what is well, your secret? It's, it, it's, it's probably a lot of things, but it's certainly those two things I think is that my mom raised us, with a feeling that we should never be afraid of anybody else. Everybody's just the same with their pants off, right? So there was that kind of feeling of, you know, they're just like you, they just have, you know, a big job or a big salary or, or they, you know, it's all exterior stuff. And so therefore talk to anybody, don't be afraid of no, and, and go through those doors of opportunity. Those were the kinds of mantras that she raised us with. So there was an incredible kind of feeling of encouragement and, and have courage and, and know yourself and be passionate and follow those passions that we were just given uh, from our childhood. It was just instilled wow. in us. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, yeah, I married, I married well, I guess. I guess I married up for sure. And, <laughs> and, and Renee, I found somebody that was, had shared the same faith as me. And if anything, is, has even more faith. She's just so strong in her faith in God and her mm -hmm. faith in me that those two things uh, I, I always hear echoing in, in my ear, you know, her talking about what God can do and what I can do um, mm -hmm. through God and for God. And, it, and that, that, that's the world, you know? And okay, I think, so that's huge yeah. right there. So all of our listeners and our viewers, you're married. Why don't you send a text right now to your husband, to your wife and just say, that's I right. believe in you. I love you. Yeah. 
I get those texts from my wife and, um, and I send those texts to her and I, and I, I think that's what keeps us going. It really yeah. is, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. you're just, you're so delightful. Okay. Uh, so Tony, what's next? What's next for the Bancroft brothers? What's next for Tony and Renee? Yeah. I know you're this like super celebrity in China and you got to do this <laughs> centerfold thing for what, what was it like bizarre magazine? And you had like five slick bizarre photographs magazine, yeah. of you. I'm going to post those below because it's just oh, hilarious. Yeah. I know how modest and like a little bit of an introvert you are. And for you to be that big of a celebrity in China and just own that and enjoy yeah. that and celebrate the 20 year anniversary of Milan. I'm so flipping proud of you, Tony. Yeah, so so share a little bit about what's up for you guys and what the future is and how can our listeners follow you guys? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So there's so many things, so many out great opportunities that have been popping up. First of all, with the 20th anniversary of Mulan, it's this year. So 20 years ago, it's amazing to think that, but the, the, the movie and that fact is I've been doing some speaking engagements. I've already traveled to Mexico to speak about Mulan. I'm going to be going out to uh, a college in Savannah to speak about Mulan later this year. And then back here to Burbank for some events also. So there's that. And then there's, um, I, I just finished Animal Crackers, this movie that should be releasing very soon. I went to China and we did a whole press tour for that. I did interviews all over. That's coming out July 27th. So I'm really ex super excited about that. And that'll be just the, the stepping road, I think, to it coming out here domestically and then through the rest of the world. So it'll have a domestic release and then it'll probably go to Netflix or something like that afterwards. Fantastic. So be looking for animal crackers. My brother and I, year, uh, four years ago, we started a podcast just like you have here. We wanted to be an encouragement to others. We wanted to be encouragement to the, to the next generation of animators and artists. So it's the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast. It's on iTunes, iHeartRadio. We're on Spotify now. Um, and it streams live at, at topbyapro.com, which is my brother's uh, company. I'm sure he'll talk about that more. Mm -hmm. um, so we've both gotten into teaching because of that. That was the first thing, the podcast. And we've celebrated our 100th episode, which is amazing. We've actually done 100 episodes now of the podcast, which is awesome. It reaches all around the world. We have fans uh, in every country of the world now. Um, over 5,000 listeners each wow. episode uh, downloads, but could be even more. I don't know. It's hard to tally that sort of thing. Um, I've written a book on directing called Directing for Animation. Everything I learned about the, the difficult and scary time that I had on Mulan, mm -hmm. the, the, the love, the hate, the good, the bad, it's all in that book, Directing for Animation. So I want that to be a support to others that want to get into animation and directing. Okay, so let's um, stop right there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to buy 10 copies. Now, both, both my brother and I. He's, but wait, 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 wait yeah. right there, Tony. I'm going to buy 10 yes, copies of the book and I'm going to gift yeah. it free. So let's throw out a challenge to our viewers and listeners, like the first 10 who do what? Like give us a little challenge around conquering fear or believing in yourself or, or maybe if they just, okay. maybe if they just actually signed up for your Bancroft brothers, I don't know, come up with an idea that I can gift a free copy of your book. Okay. Um, you know what? Here's a good one. I, I would love some followers on my Instagram. I have over 30,000 followers, but I want to hit 50. So I'd love for your listeners to come join me on Instagram. I'm at Pumba guy. That's P U M B A A. There's two A's in Pumba Pumba guy since I animated Pumba and the Lion King. So go to Pumba guy. And if you write, um, uh, there's got to be a way, you know, just in one of my postings, just write that you joined and that you are a listener of Lisa Jimenez. Um, and that'll be enough. And I'll, I'll tally those and I'll figure out who is the first 10. How's that? Okay. That's and awesome. Then, All right. And, and then also my, my request is that you actually, you guys, listeners, viewers, you post underneath this, this uh, fearless Friday show that you, you did that. You went to Pumba guy and, uh, and you're following Sony Bancroft. Great. Uh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. And the book is available on amazon.com. That's probably the easiest place to get it. And they have a really good rate on it right now. Um, Do I get a cousin's discount? I, I don't think you could beat the Amazon discounts. So I don't think I could. <laughs> I actually buy them from the publisher at a discount rate. And yeah, Amazon, I know. Amazon I get that. It. Yeah. Okay. No worries. I'm buying 10. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> Amazon will love it too. Um, but yeah, Tom and I both have gotten into teaching now. And that was kind of after the podcast started taking off, we've seen that it was such a, a craze for, you know, 
stories about animation, but also, you know, passing on our knowledge that we've had for the last 30 years of creating animation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at uh, Azusa Pacific University. It's a private Christian school in Azusa, which is just like 25 minutes outside of LA and Hollywood. Um, there's a great cinematic arts live action program there. And I have started, I'm the program director and started a four year program and a curriculum in animation and visual effects. So that's mm -hmm. 2D animation, like hand drawn that I used yeah, to do, wow. but it's also CG animation like they do in the big Hollywood movies. Mm -hmm. And so if there's listeners out there and interest in animation, you can look at, uh, you know, look into Azusa Pacific University. It might be right. I love that. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's close it out with a little bit of a call to action for our viewers. So let's say maybe we talk to the animators, Tony, maybe we talk yeah. to, you know, the creative yeah. Uh, uh, beings out there. What, what kind of call to action or kind of a, a sense of, of, of pouring out faith over them of what they can do to expand their careers? Uh, I'll tell you, that's a great one uh, because I love being able to say this to artists. So I'm going to say this to the artists out there, the creatives, the writers. You have a uniqueness about you and that's what needs to come through your work. We all, God has made us all unique. We all have a different point of view. We all have a story to tell. We all have a style that we draw and paint in that is unique to you. Don't copy other people, but express your uniqueness through your work. Find that voice and let it come through you and you will be successful. I guarantee it. Love it. Beautiful. Tony Bancroft, you are a gentleman and a prince. <laughs> oh, I love my cousin Lisa. That's I know. Her. Thank you for saying yes to being a guest on Fearless Fridays with Lisa. Rich blessings over you and Renee and the girls, and we'll chat soon. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Lisa. All right. Take care. <laughs> Love to you. You too. Bye, Bye, listeners. Thank you for joining us today. And we uh, will post the challenge underneath here, and uh, you get a free copy of Tony Bancroft's book. Bye for now, everybody. Make it a great Fearless Friday. We're out. Oh, I lost your audio. I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. Can you hear me? Shake your head yes if you can hear me. Maybe stop recording. I, still, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, I'm the host now.